If you've ever Googled what is safe to do during pregnancy when it comes to your prenatal workouts, there's so many things and super long lists of things that are super dangerous to do. In this series, we're going to break down a lot of these myths and help you better understand what you can actually do during your prenatal workouts so that you can feel confident approaching your workouts without all of this fear-based recommendations. Hey, my name is Gina. For those of you that don't know me, I am the founder here at Mama Stay Fit. Mama Stay Fit is a perinatal fitness training company, and we also offer online childbirth education courses. In our training facility, we offer in-person prenatal and postpartum fitness training, and we also offer all of these programs online as well to the international community. Our programming is going to help you stay strong throughout your pregnancies, to help you stay comfortable throughout your pregnancy, and then also help prepare you for birth. And then we have programs that help you return to fitness in the postpartum period. If you're looking for childbirth education courses, we offer online childbirth education courses that teach you the science of birth. So let's go ahead and get started on whether or not you should twist during pregnancy. And so this is a common recommendation that I'll see. I'll even hear medical providers tell our patients that twisting is really dangerous to do. And so to start, this myth is false. It is not something that you need to avoid doing. And actually avoiding twisting could probably cause more discomfort and pain for you. So there's more issues involved with not twisting than twisting. But first, let's understand why is this a recommendation. And so typically, I see this as a recommendation in the yoga community where there's a lot of twists involved in the yoga practice. And it's something that's becoming more outdated recommendation, but I'll still see yoga practitioners and teachers really pushing that twisting is dangerous. And this was something that was pushed on me when I was a newly pregnant person back in 2017 or 2016. And so the reason why twisting may be viewed to be dangerous is because of the compression of the abdomen and the thought that if we are twisting and torquing within the abdomen, it could be affecting the uterus. And if we're just twisting in the uterus, it potentially could be harming the baby or affecting the placenta or potentially detaching the placenta. And so you can see how this kind of would make sense. Like, okay, if I'm really twisting and torquing in this place, it might cause harm to the uterus. The good news is this baby is very protected within the uterus. There's multiple layers surrounding baby offering different levels of protection. So we have different tissue and muscle layers that surround the uterus. We have the uterus itself. And then within the uterus, we have the amniotic fluid sac that is helping to protect and cushion baby. And so this is really important because you don't want to bump around and then have something go wrong with your baby or your placenta completely detach. And so our uterus is going to be very protective of our baby. And so twisting and torquing within your body is not going to cause harm to your baby or to your placenta. However, we probably do want to avoid super deep abdominal compressions because they're probably just not going to be very comfortable for you and probably not very accessible to you. So I'm not recommending to do the deepest twist possible or to completely compress in your belly because one, that's not going to be very comfortable. And I just we don't want to be uncomfortable as we approach our workouts during pregnancy. So let's break down why twisting is so important during pregnancy. So in our spine, we have different segments to it. We have our thoracic spine, we have a lumbar spine, and then we have the pelvis or the hips. The thoracic spine and the hips are meant to be super mobile. So they are able to rotate and twist and change directions. The hip joint can do all sorts of different movements as well. The lumbar spine or our low back is meant to be very stable. The vertebrae there are very thick and they're meant to maintain their position really well. There is a little bit of rotational capability to them, but in general, they want to stay pretty stacked with one another. And if we think about what's in front of the lumbar spine, it's going to be the uterus and our belly. And so that maintaining its position will probably be pretty comfortable for you. But if we don't twist, we're still going to want to accomplish functional movement. And so we're probably still going to rotate at some point. But if we're limiting the rotation in the upper back or we're limiting rotation in the hips, somewhere else has got to pick up the slack. And it's probably going to be your lumbar spine or your low back. And so if we're limiting twisting in the upper back and we're limiting twisting in the hips, we're going to probably have a little bit more twisting happening in the low back, which may mean you have a little bit more discomfort there. And so rotation and twisting within the spine is very important. And if we don't, we're probably going to be more uncomfortable, particularly in that lumbar spine. The next thing that not twisting can contribute towards is it can contribute towards pelvic girdle pain. 
And so if we do not twist or rotate in the hips when we walk or when we move, the pelvis is not going to be able to form clothes on itself. What that means is as we walk, the pelvis is supposed to kind of twist a little bit. And this is going to allow the joints to better align with themselves and compress on itself. And so if we never twist and our pelvis just kind of maintains its position all the time, it's going to be a lot harder for those pelvic joints to stabilize on themselves. So the lack of movement in the spine, particularly the upper back and the hips, is going to cause more discomfort for you, particularly in the lumbar spine. You might have more lower back pain or you might even have pelvic girdle pain due to the lack of rotation within the pelvis. And so twisting and rotation is one just really important for your overall mobility and comfort within your spine. To counter the no twisting argument, I typically we hear that we should only do open hip position. And so what does open hip mean? What open hip means is the femur is moving away from the pelvis or the pelvis is opening up away from the femur. And so we're having this more open hip position or more external rotation. So the leg is moving out away from the body. And so the recommendation is, well, we can twist, but we can only twist in open hip positions where the belly moves away from the thigh. And so this recommendation is also problematic. And so if we're always favoring external rotation and we're creating more space here in the top of the pelvis, what is happening is the bottom half of the pelvis, especially this posterior portion here, is going to be decreasing in space. And when our bones are changing position, it's because the muscles are pulling them into those positions. And so the back half here of the pelvic floor is going to be a lot tighter. And this can be a problem because there is a lot going on back here with our pelvic floor. We want this portion of our pelvic floor to increase in space and lengthen. And so if we have a really tight posterior pelvic floor, you might one, have some issues with constipation. So you'll have issues pooping. The other thing is our tailbone back here might cause some discomfort, especially if there's an uneven pull on this tailbone that's pulling it a little bit towards one side or the other. So really tight pelvic floor during your pregnancy can cause issues with constipation. It can also cause issues with tailbone pain. In addition, if I'm always favoring this external rotation and I'm creating an imbalance in my musculature that is decreasing space in the lower part of my pelvis, it's going to make it a lot harder for my baby to rotate and exit my pelvis. And so I might have some issues during my labor because of the decreased space in the bottom of my pelvis and my inability to create that space to allow my baby to rotate and exit my body. The next consideration is that internal rotation or closed hip positions help us stabilize within the pelvis. So as I am walking, the hip that I am stancing on or standing on is going to come into internal rotation. So that hip is going to shift backwards and allow those pelvic joints to best stabilize on themselves. If I'm always favoring external rotation and I'm trying to stance, the pelvic joints are not going to be able to well align and it could be really uncomfortable or painful as I'm walking. So it could increase pelvic girdle pain. And so if the recommendation is, well, you can twist but only do open hip positions, this is also going to be problematic because if we never find internal rotation, the back half of the pelvic floor here is going to be a lot tighter, which can cause issues with tailbone pain, constipation, also for labor, it decreases space in the bottom of the pelvis, making it harder for your baby to finish their rotation out of your pelvis. And it can make it harder for you to stabilize within your pelvic girdle. Internal rotation is a key factor to stabilize the pelvic girdle while we are walking. And so during pregnancy, it is really important that we still twist and rotate our spine and rotate within our hips. You may find that when you don't rotate, you have a lot more discomfort and pain. But when you begin to rotate and twist within your spine, you begin to relieve a lot of that pain and discomfort. And so it's important that we twist within our spine. I would recommend avoiding like really deep abdominal compressions because one, they're just not going to be very comfortable for you. So in summary, yes, we do want to twist in our spine during our pregnancy. You may find that if you don't twist, you have a lot more discomfort and pain during your pregnancy. But once you integrate some mobility that includes rotation, we have a lot less discomfort. And so when we're rotating in the thoracic spine and we're integrating that mobility there, and we're finding both the open and closed hip positions for the hip, it really relieves a lot of discomforts and pelvic girdle pain that you may be having. 
If you want to feel confident about approaching your workouts during your pregnancy, be sure to join our prenatal fitness programs. We offer our prenatal fitness programs in two formats. The Team Builder app, which is going to be a list of exercises with short demo videos, which is going to be a self-paced workout program. This program is going to be great for somebody that wants to continue to lift throughout their pregnancy, and it's great for both gym and home workouts. We also have our on-demand program, which is going to be full-length workout videos that you follow along at the same time. And this is going to be a great option for somebody that primarily wants to work out at home, but you could also do this in a gym setting. Our prenatal fitness programs are going to sync to your current week of pregnancy or your current trimester. So our Team Builder app syncs to your current week of pregnancy. If you're 20 weeks, you'll start at week 20 of the program. And our on-demand programs are going to sync to your current trimester. If you're in the first trimester, you'll do first trimester on-demand programming, second or third trimester. So this is going to allow you to start our programs at any time. In addition to the fitness programming, our programs are going to come with an educational course to teach you how to confidently approach fitness during your pregnancy. There's so many lists of things that are unsafe to do, and there's so many myths and conflicting information about what is safe to do for you and your baby during pregnancy that it can be really overwhelming. And because of these long lists that are based on fear, it can be very discouraging to even work out during your pregnancy. And so in order to help you feel confident approaching your workouts, we include an education course with our fitness program so that you know what's safe for you to do and that you can feel confident that you're going to have all of the benefits of prenatal fitness for both you and your baby. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to like and subscribe to our channel so that you get notified when the next episode of this series gets released. We're going to talk about things like does exercise cause miscarriage? Should you monitor your heart rate during your pregnancy? Whether or not you should exercise on your back? And then should you do core exercises during your pregnancy or are all core and ab exercises off limits? And so be sure to like and subscribe so that you get notified when the next episode releases. And if there's something specific that you want myth busted, make sure to comment below so that we know to create a video for you.